great to be here with you on this on this Easter uh, weekend. And I uh, do want to just let you know a few other things. There, If you don't know what this is, this is what we call Buddy Barrel. And he is a, uh, we have a Boys and Girls Missions Challenge. And we have been through the month of March, been focusing on uh, trying to raise $600 for uh, just this month for two great projects that we support. But to kind of make it a little bit more fun, we have a girls and a boys side. And uh, to bring it to just the next level, Pastor Jonathan and, and Miss Michelle, his wife, are, uh, are one of them is going to get a pie next Sunday. One of, the, <laughs> one of them. So if the boys win, it's going to be Michelle. So, uh, yeah, so please, uh, if you got some change and you want to support it, uh, there's some buckets over here. You can drop that off. And then, of course, after service, uh, we're immediately after service, we're going to uh, have a time of just fellowship, of just a box lunch. Encourage you to stay, hang out with us, and uh, just enjoy this beautiful day. All right, isn't this a beautiful day, right? Man, he has made a great day for us. So, you better hit them, boys. thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I want you to turn with me for just a moment. Turn with me to uh, John chapter 20. John chapter 20. And uh, we're going to just look at a story very familiar to you. I was thinking last night. Anyone look last night and, and realize, you know, we, we focus on Friday and we focus on Sunday. But think about where the disciples were on, on Saturday. Uh, Jesus had died. And I don't know, just there was just like a hopelessness, if you will, on that Saturday, just really not knowing that Sunday was coming. And I love that when we read the Bible, we get all the wonderful ins and outs, and we see that, man, we know what happened. We know exactly what happened, that Jesus came, and we, we see the Sunday story. But the disciples didn't know that, did they? They were having to literally walk by faith. The other thing I love is that, here in, here in the, the, the year that we're in, 2021, does anybody remember last year? Does anyone remember where you were last year on Easter? I remember where we were. We were trying to figure out how to do this church online stuff. And here we are in 2021. We have shifted and we, do out, we did out a lot of outside services last, last year. But uh, I remember all the things that had happened right around this season but I also remember that Jesus is still the same yesterday, today, and forever, isn't he? Jesus, uh, in this year that we're celebrating, I love that despite we're, even we're, what's going on in our world right now, despite the news, despite things that are happening, the one story that we can hold to is that Jesus came back for us. He is risen. Amen? He is risen. He has changed everything. If you're not, uh, if you're not accustomed to the horns being honked and things like that, just feel free. That's just how it rolls here on, on our drive-in service. So let's just remember just for a moment, let's talk through this day that we celebrate, which is one of the most powerful days. The resurrection of Jesus is the moment that changed everything, didn't it? It changed absolutely everything in this world. It shifted things in our lives. And, and here's the thing is, when you have accepted him, you get that. When you accepted what he's done in your life, you get that. When you haven't had the relationship, you say, well, you know, not really a whole lot has changed. Jesus really didn't do a whole lot. But when you have invited him into your life and there's that moment that you say, you know what? I used to live this way, but, but there was a shifting in my heart in my life. I tell people all the time, I love when, when you have accepted Jesus in your life, but there should be a shifting moment in your life. He should cause the relationship that you come into should cause things to change in your life so much that you say, wow, like my friends are different. My, my life looks different. I'm willing to go places and do things I never was willing to do before. And in that moment, we say, Jesus, you changed everything. And that's what we're focusing on today. The greatest moment in human history. The moment that changed it all. Now, I realize when I say that, there's probably some here that say, you know what, Pastor, I've heard this message before, that Jesus changed everything. I've been in church a long time. I, I, I've heard these stories. I could, I could tell you the story. And here's the difference between hearing a story and applying a story to our lives. I could tell you the same thing. I heard the stories all my life. But when he becomes real to you, and he desires to become real to you even today, right now, when he becomes real to you, the story 
is not just a story. It's a celebration of a relationship in your life. And that's why we're here today. We're here to celebrate, not just religion, not just a, a building, not just, you know, Easter and eggs and chocolate. We're here to celebrate, Lord, what you've done in our lives. So I want to, uh, if you've got your Bibles, I want you to just read. I want to read, want you to read along with me here in John chapter 20. Jesus, uh, I love what has already happened. Uh, we see that, that uh, Simon Peter has already run ahead and uh, he's already gone uh, to the tomb to check it out. Of course, Mary had already gone. I, I love what happens. Mary and the, and the ladies go, they go to the tomb. Jesus isn't there. They come back. Remember, they were on kind of lockdown, right? Because they were in fear. They were kind of huddled in a house. They were not leaving for fear for their lives. And, and all of a sudden, I can just imagine this, that, that Peter, Simon, Peter, and John, they hear that his body isn't there. They hear, and, and all of a sudden, the, all the fear up to that moment shifts in their life. And they just say, you know what? Uh, we got to get out. We got to see this for ourselves. And so all of a sudden they shift from where they're at and they say, we've got to go to the very place. And, and so they kind of, can you just see it? Like the sun is just coming up in the morning. There's probably, it's probably kind of quiet and they're kind of sneaking out. And then all of a sudden that, that kind of sneaking out turns into a sprint. We've got to make it there. And they go all the way there and they see for themselves, what in the world is happening? We don't understand this moment. And they come back and when they come back, they share with everyone. He's not there anymore. There must have been a confusion in that moment, even though they know that he said, I'm going to, I'm going to go to the father. I'm going to, but in that moment, they're thinking, where's his body? What is happening? So it's interesting, fear, curiosity overtook the fear in their life. And then all of a sudden they said, we're willing to do something that we weren't willing to do before. In that very moment, I love what we read here in John chapter 20. John chapter 20 in verse 19. It says this, it says, Jesus, now remember, they were hiding out. They were locked down. They were in a building. They were in a place. They're gathered together. They're, they're fearful. All of a sudden, in that moment, Jesus came and was standing among them. Imagine that. Do, do you ever have those moments where you say, Jesus, I would just love for you just to appear to me. You ever, you ever have those moments where you're just going through something? Man, it would be great, right? Or you say, I want to see an angel or something. You say something, you know, that, oh, I just want to. All of a sudden, the disciples are there in fear, and Jesus shows up. And I love the first thing you hear whenever you read the Word of God, an angel appears in someone's life, Jesus shows up. What's the first thing he says? He says, peace be with you, right? Calm down, don't worry. But I love the perspective that Jesus had here. He wasn't just saying, hey, why don't you just calm down? Why don't you just chill out? You've been worked over. He, he wasn't just saying all the things that when we think of like, peace be with you. He was saying, he, he, was, he was saying in this moment, I have overcome everything. I have overcome the worst of the worst. I have overcome the betrayal of a close friend. I have overcome the, the beating and everything that the world could throw at me. Everything the government could throw at me. Everything that the religious leaders could throw at me. I died. I went to hell. I came back. Let me just tell you, there is peace that I'm speaking over you. That the peace that only I can bring would be with you in this moment. You have been fearful in this moment. You have been filled with anxiety in this moment. And I just want to speak peace over your life. When Jesus showed up, when he stepped into that moment, he began to speak that over their lives. Let me tell you, even today in this moment, have you had some fearful moments? Have you had some moments that you're just overwhelmed? Maybe other things are happening in your life and, and you're just saying, God, I need you. The promise of the Lord, we have been looking at the promises of God all year. And the promise of the Lord is that when you call on my name, I will not only answer, I'm going to come into your life. Right? When you, when you seek me, you're going to find me. There's a promise there. With the story we're reading about where they said, man, Jesus, we don't know what to do. We went look for your body. We didn't see you there. Now all of a sudden Jesus shows up and he says, peace be with you. Can I say this to you today? What's going on in your life right now? I know Easter, but this day is the day we dress up, right? We come to church and it's just, it's churches are going to be filled today. Well, I want to ask you what's going on in your life right now. Like really where you're at. What are you struggling with? What's the thing that's got you wore out from this week? 
what pains in your life, what things are transpiring in you. Can I just say this? And Jesus would say to you, I want to bring the peace that only I can bring to your life. Peace be with you. I want to strengthen you. I want to be with you today. On this day, on this day that we remember him, the first thing I want to give you just a few points here. The first thing I want to let you know is that you and I have to choose to receive peace. Peace from the risen Jesus. We've got to choose to receive it. You know, it's really easy for us to get anxious and worked up and overwhelmed. That, that's kind of part of human, our, just our human anatomy, right? Just kind of just what's natural to us where we, something happens and we get all worked up. And the next thing we know, we don't have any peace in our life. Have you ever been so stressed out when you say, Lord, I just, I need some peace. Lord, the peace that only you can bring. But I love when Jesus steps into this. He says, listen, I have been through the worst. I have endured the worst. I have endured everything that hell could throw at me. And yet I'm here today to tell you, I'm standing before you. I can give you peace. I have walked through it and I can give you what you need. Let me tell you, the relationship of Jesus is about what he can bring into your life. He says, look, I want you to surrender to me. And in return, here's what I can bring into your life. I can bring the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. I don't know if you've ever been through a season of life. I've had a few seasons of life in the last few years where I have been overwhelmed. Yeah. Overwhelmed. Maybe even just to the place of just saying, God, I don't know what to do. I've had moments over the last few years where I've just said, Jesus, I need you. And have you ever thought through the worst case scenario? Have you ever thought through like, how bad could it be? Like, how bad could it get? you start, your mind starts, starts to wander and you start to go down that path of thinking, well, this could happen and then that could happen and then that could happen and it just gets worse and worse and worse. Let me ask you something. What is the worst case scenario that could happen in the thing that you're worrying about right now? Now, let me ask you this. In that worst case scenario, what, what would you do? How would you respond? You'd maybe try to fix it you may be trying to buy your way out of it. You would maybe try to figure out a way, maybe it was finances, to get finances. You'd figure out a way, if it was a health-related thing, to get to yourself or that person you love, to the, to the, to the doctor. To, to, you know, you would, but then what happens when all that doesn't work? What would you do? God, I need you. I need you. What would happen right now in, in the situation, whatever you're dealing with right now, that you start out with, God, I need you? God, I need you in my life. I need the peace that only you can bring. You see, there's, there's a part of us that we have to always, every day, what? We've got to surrender. You ever realize that? There's a surrender moment, not just when we invite him into our life, but every single day we need to surrender. I love that. Have you ever, have any of you ever flown? And have any of you been on a plane? And you get on the plane, and then all of a sudden, you know, how many just, just hate the turbulence, right? I don't think anyone likes turbulence, right? It's that thing where, like, the plane feels like it dropped 20 feet, and you're in the air, and you're saying, Dear Jesus, I don't want to go home today, right? You're just clinging to something, someone, a chair, something. And, and right as, right, usually right before that, the captain comes on. The pilot comes on. And what does the pilot say? He says, listen, I just want to let you know that we're going to hit some turbulence. But don't worry. We're going to go up a little bit higher. And we're going to get out of the turbulent area so that you can have a, just a, a safer flight. But there's going to be a few moments here that, that it's going to be turbulent. And there's going to be some rough moments. But I just want to let you know, I got you. Right? You're going to go through some stuff for the next few minutes. Listen, I've been on trips where I was just literally ready to lose my lunch. And I'm just saying, get us to a different elevation. Get us out of here. Right? I mean, I, my stomach wasn't enjoying the ride. Well, when you think about what we go through in life, Jesus is the pilot that comes on and he says, listen, there's going to be some turbulent times ahead of you. But don't worry. I got it. Trust me in this. Trust me. And there's something about when the pilot comes on and he goes, hey, listen, I'm looking at all the instruments. I just want to let you know this is what you can uh, expect to happen, but I'm going to get you out of this. Jesus is our pilot today. Amen. Amen. This story continues. The story continues in John chapter 20, verse, verse 20. He says, as he spoke, 
He showed them the wounds in his hands and his side. He's proving it to them. And they were filled, this is interesting, it says they were filled with joy when they saw, when they saw the Lord. In verse 21, again he says, peace be with you. Notice this, as the Father has sent me, I'm going to send you. We're going to focus on these three verses just for a moment. So Jesus not only says, peace be with you, but then he shows them the wounds, and then they're filled with joy in that moment. The second thing I want you to see here, is that you and I have to receive the purpose of Jesus. He rose from the grave on purpose, for a purpose. And it wasn't just his purpose. He then gave us purpose. He gave his disciples purpose. He says, I've got a purpose for you, right? Jeremiah 29, 11, right? I know the plan I have. I know the purpose I have for you. I know what I've got in store for you. I have a purpose for your life. And when we understand that today there's a purpose for us. I mean, you, you may say, listen, I don't need any more purpose in my life. I've got stress and anxiety from being a, maybe you're a, a husband, maybe you're a parent, maybe you're, you're in a workplace. I don't need any more purpose in my life. I got enough. Understand the purpose of Jesus isn't anxiety and stress. and There is a true mission behind it. And he says, when you take hold of the purpose that I have for your life, your life will begin to look different. In fact, I'm going to empower you to accomplish things that you never thought even possible. And he says to them, I want to send you on mission. When we receive the Lord into our life, we're not just saying, hey, Jesus, uh, you know, come into my life, rescue me so that I can just go to heaven. But we're also signing up for his purpose. So what did he say here to them? He said, listen, he shows them, he shows them his side. He shows them his hands. They're filled with joy. And he says, just as the Father sent me, now I'm going to send you. Remember, in this moment, up to this moment, they were filled with fear. They didn't know what was going to happen. The one they had been following for three years had left. They didn't quite understand how this was all going to play out. But in that moment, all of a sudden, they said, he said, I, I've been on, on purpose doing things behind the scenes. And now I want to let you know there's a purpose to your life. I want to send you out to reach the world. You know, I think many times in this last 12 months that we've gone through, the approach to what we've gone through in the world today is either to kind of lock down and hide or to say, God, what purpose do you have for me? What purpose? How can you use me in this moment? Can I tell you today? I know we're kind of coming out of it, right? I mean, nobody really, people aren't really wearing masks anymore, we're not social distancing anymore. We're, we're kind of like kind of coming out of it. You say, well, you know, Pastor, we're kind of we're kind of through it. Maybe that's your approach, or maybe maybe you still feel wearing it wherever you are. Can I just say this to you? In this season that we're in, and throughout this year. Jesus has a purpose for you. He wants to use you in this moment to share and spread the gospel. There are still people that are overcome with fear and anxiety. There's still people that are very angry. There's still people that are dealing with things that, that you can't even fathom. You, say, you may say, listen, this is what I'm going through. Can I say to you right now, there is a purpose that Jesus has for your life this year and in this season. Just because there's an obstacle, just because there's a crisis, does not mean the purpose of Jesus has stopped. In fact, we're in the parking lot because Jesus still has purpose. We're intentionally here because we want the message to get out. And we want those that say, hey, look, I, I can't come in. I, I need to go somewhere. We we're here in the parking lot to say, hey, look, we want to give you a place. Can I say to you today that Jesus wants to use you this year to speak life over people, to share the hope, to bring, share the peace that only he can bring. It comes through the very story that you have, your testimony, who you are, and what God has done in your life. It's so important for us to not just come to a place where we say, well, we're, we're kind of crippled. We can't do anything. There are opportunities in every crisis, every crisis that we face. I love that when you understand in the moment of crisis, right, there's an opportunity for us as followers of Jesus to be sent by him into the midst of what we're walking through and to make a difference and to carry the purpose of life. Can I just say, parents, you have an awesome opportunity. I'm a parent. 
I mean, I, I feel some days I'm just trying to survive. You know what I'm saying? Like, Jesus, help me survive being a parent, right? Uh, help me make it through. But as parents, we get a, an amazing opportunity to pour into our children on purpose. What Jesus has done in our lives to help mold and make them, right? Listen, as, as, uh, um, as a family, think about what you get to do as a family. You get to pour into your family. You get to help bring purpose to your family. You get to help breathe life. Listen, husbands, you have a purpose. You have a purpose to be the priest of your home. That's not more guilt and shame and, oh, i got to do one more thing. But let me tell you, when you pray over your wife, when you pray over your children, there's a shifting in heaven that happens, right? Because God says, I move through the authority of the house, right? I'm moving through you. So when we take bold steps and we say, honey, I'm going to pray for you. And you take hold and you pray over your kids. You don't have to pray in King James. You don't have to be elaborate in any way. But when you take that... 30 seconds, 60 seconds to pray over your family, to lead your family. Moms, when you lead the charge, look, we're impacting our families. That is on purpose. That's what God has called us to do. As followers of Christ, we have a chance to serve our community. We have a chance to serve the community. And when I say serve the community, there's there's large event things that we can do. But when I'm what I really mean is that when you go next door here, when you go to the grocery store, when you go to whatever Walgreens or wherever you go, you have a purpose to begin to speak life into someone's life. Every single time you hear someone say, this is what I'm dealing with, you have a moment to say this. Can I pray with you? And you know, sometimes that's like, you know, some of the most difficult things that we can do is, can I pray with you? Because we think, well, what if they say no? If they say no, that's fine. But can we go with purpose into our community? Can we go with purpose into our families? Parents, can we go with purpose as we lead our children? I love what Jesus has done. He's come and he's given us purpose. And every day you should say, Lord, I receive your purpose. Every day you wake up, you say, God, I surrender. Me, I surrender my plans. And God, I receive your purpose. Lord, send me today. You know, sometimes we're just trying to make it. God doesn't want you to just try to make it every day. He wants to give you some purpose every day. Amen? Let me give you just two more points real quick. The third one is that I, receive, I choose to receive the power. The power of the risen Jesus. Man, this is the exciting part. I mean, come on. The power of the risen Jesus. Let me just tell you. When you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, Jesus comes into this moment, and I love what happens. He literally speaks over them, and He pours out His Spirit on them, right? But when you have the, the Spirit of God inside of you, the Holy Spirit inside of you, there's power in your life. Now, you think, well, what kind of power do I get? You get power to endure. You get power to speak life. You get power in your life. And you say, well, I don't, I don't quite understand this. Look, Sometimes you say, well, I just can't make it. Have, you, have any of you ever, like, been into running? I'm clearly not a runner, okay? God did not bless me with that, okay? I, I probably should probably take it up, right? But have you ever been into running? My dad was a great runner. He tells great stories. And my dad tells stories about him being a runner. And he, he set all kinds of records at his high school, and, and he was doing his thing, and and I don't know about you, but if you've ever been into running, there's a moment, especially if you've run long distances, if you've run cross country, there's a moment where your body just says, hey, uh, I'm, I'm done. Like, I don't want to run anymore, right? Maybe you're like me. That happens like in the first 30 seconds. Your body's like, what are you doing to me? I don't want to do this anymore, right? But when you really, when you begin to run and you begin to run a, a distance and all of a sudden you hit what they call the wall. In life, we can hit with a, a wall. God, I can't do it anymore. I'm tapped out of everything I know to do. God, I'm tapped out of every resource I, I have. God, I'm just, I'm done. I'm burned out. I'm overwhelmed. I can't make it anymore. Can I say to you, the power of the Holy Spirit fills you up with joy. What happened when Jesus stepped into the room? The disciples weren't just like, there he is, but they were filled with joy. He's here. He really came back for us. Now, how does that apply to us today? Let me tell you, in your life right now, that same Jesus brings joy in your life. 
brings strength into your life, brings power into your life to overcome, to press through, to press beyond. And let me tell you, it's accessible to us. In fact, he says, I want you to be able to have the power to endure, not in of your own strength. You know, we tend to do everything in our own strength, don't we? But the word of God says, not by your might, not by your power, but it's by my spirit. On this day that we celebrate Jesus, can we surrender to him again and say, God, not by my might, not by my power, but God, by your spirit. You see, the plan of God is so much deeper than what we can understand, right? It's so much greater than what we can understand. And I just want to encourage you in this. I want to speak this over to you. I got you. I have one more point I want to share with you. And I just want to speak this over you. And here's what I want you to do. Would you just close your eyes just for a moment? We're not, we're not finished yet, but I, I just want you to close your eyes for a moment. Maybe just lift your hand or just move your hand to just receive this. And I just want to speak this over you today. May the Holy Spirit flood your home in Jesus' name. By the resurrection power of His name, I pray the presence of God would invade the room that you're at, the car there, wherever you're watching, right where you're at. The place where you're at, maybe the car you're sitting in right now or the chair you're in right now, that you would feel the presence of God, that you would begin to be sustained and carried by the joy that only the Lord can bring, that God would give you his grace and his strength, that he'd begin to speak to you and remind you of things, that God would begin to pour out his life into you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus stepped into that room. He stepped into that room. And joy filled the place where he was at. Joy filled the heart of the disciples that were there. Joy filled. Oh, have you ever had the overwhelming joy of the Lord God? Uh, our situation hasn't changed. We're still being hunted down. We're still, uh, there's things happening. But in the midst of where we are, the joy of the Lord is there. God, I receive the joy that you have for me today. I receive the Lord. Lord, just what you have for me today. I want to give you this fourth thing as Kevin comes. We're going to get ready to take communion today. I want to give you this fourth thing. That I received the proof from the risen Jesus Remember in verse 20, Jesus steps into the room and he says, he shows them his wounds in his hands and his side. And then they were filled with joy. They were filled with joy. You know, sometimes, I don't know if you've, if you've been at the place where you say, Jesus, I just need some proof. I need some proof that you're real. I was talking to my father-in-law, who's also a pastor. I was talking with him this week. And um, we were talking about he was sharing with me just a powerful story. He said there was a young man that, that attends uh, one of the groups that I do. It's a young man, and he's 21 years old. And at 10 years old, something horrific happened to him. His father just horrifically did something evil, wicked, in his life. And since 10 years old, he went into... He pursued drugs, alcohol, everything he could to numb the pain of that moment. It stuck with him to the place that he, he even had moments where he wanted to kill himself. He'd been to a lot of different churches. And now he's standing in front of my father-in-law. And he's saying, I, I don't know what to do. And my father-in-law said this to him. He said, here's what I want to challenge you to do. The father loves you. The heaven, your heavenly father loves you and he wants to make himself known to you he wants to reveal himself to you he wants to show himself real to you in this moment the things that you're carrying he doesn't want you to carry anymore he wants to bring healing and life to you and he says here's what I want you to do I want you to go home and I want you to call on the name of the Lord and say God if you're real I need you in this moment this is a 21-year-old, just a week or two ago, goes home, and he, he falls on his knees after 11 years of carrying this horrific scar of this moment that happened from his earthly father. He begins to call on the name of Jesus. It wasn't elaborate, it wasn't eloquent, but he says, God, if you are real, I need you in this moment. 
I need you in this moment. He said he was at his bed. He was just praying there and saying, God, I, I don't even really know how to, how to do this. And he said, all of a sudden, something happened. He said, I felt a presence come into that room. And he said, it was like the presence of God wrapped its, his arms around me. He said, I could feel the presence of God in my life. I could sense him. And for the very first time, I, I realized that he's real, that he cares for me, that in this moment, he was showing himself true to me. And he said, all of a sudden, everything that I have battled with, suicide and all the thoughts and the images and things that have gone on in my life, in that moment, he said, I didn't want to leave that moment. And he's telling my father-in-law, he's saying, listen, pastor, I didn't want to leave that moment because the presence of God was so real to me. Can I say to you right now, that's a powerful story of what God did just a few weeks ago in somebody else's life. But can I say to you right now, the same Jesus we're talking about is not the storybook of 2,000 years ago that we're reading. He's the God that wants to move in your life. He's the everlasting Father that wants to touch you right where you're at. He's the Father that wants you. When you call on His name, He wants to respond to you. See, this young man, he struggled and he said, Well, Jesus, there's just no way that you could love me. He felt so much guilt and shame because he thought there were things that he had done, although many, had, many things had been done to him. Can I say to you on this day that we celebrate Jesus? I've had about all the celebration of religion I, I can handle. I've been to Israel. I've seen the, the, just the, the buildings. I, I, I've seen the, the places. I've seen, I've seen what man can build and what man can do. I'm not interested in what man can do. I'm only interested in what Jesus can do. Because Jesus can change our lives. Jesus can change the situation. Jesus can bring healing. In the, in the world that we're in right now, in this day, this celebration of the resurrection of Jesus, can I say to you, I don't know where you're at or what you're going through, but he wants to move in your life right now. I was 17 years old. I've shared this many times with you, but I was 17 years old. I had my fill of religion. Grew up in a pastor's home. Went to church. I was a good kid. I was empty, though, because I was missing what only he could bring into my life. I looked at my parents, and I, I knew they had a real relationship with Jesus. I knew there was something genuine that was happening in their life. But for me, I, I, I didn't have that relationship. And I was 17 years old. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was in my room. I'd already gone down the road of trying to fill my life with, with the void. I tried to fill my life with unhealthy relationships, stuff in my life. And at 17 years old, I, I was done. I was empty. I was, I was just done with everything. See, I'd already gone down that road and found there was nothing there. And I didn't know what else to do. I didn't really even feel like I could turn to the Lord because I said, God, you know, I've, I've just walked away from you. And I'd already tried to fill it with everything in the world I could find, but there was a season of, of wow, this, this might be it, but in the end, it was, it was empty. And I was sitting on the floor in my room, leaning up against the bed, my bed. I, I can remember it so clearly. And I had been hurt. And you know, when hurt comes into your life, pain comes into your life, you think, God, I, I just, I got into the place where I, I never cried anymore. 17 years old, wouldn't, wouldn't cry at anything. The most horrific thing could happen in front of me, it wouldn't phase me. My heart had gone so cold. And in that moment, I remember saying, God, I'm so empty right now. God, I need you. And God, if you will, would you come into my life again? Would you come and Lord, touch my life? In that moment, at 17 years old, I began a journey in my life. God came into my life. I took a trip and I went to a, believe it or not, I went to another church far away from my home. And I was still in pursuit of the Lord. And I said, God, if you're real to me, would you make yourself known to me? And that's what he did. You see, there's nothing, there's nothing mystical or magical or 
There's no secret words that you have to say. It's just simply, God, I need you. Because God is in pursuit of our heart, the desires of our heart. And he says, I want to be the desire of your heart. On this day that we celebrate, on this day, can we celebrate the power of the Lord, the purpose of what he's come to do, the very presence of God that desires to be in your life. That's why we're here today. In just a moment, we're going to take communion. If you've got your communion cups with you, you should have received one when you came in. Just get those ready here. But can I ask you to do this? Get that communion cup. If you need one, our ushers are up there. They can walk around here and, and, and get you one. But can I ask you to do this? There's one thing that Jesus said. Do you, you ever notice that Jesus never said, I want you to remember my birth? He never even said, I want you to remember my resurrection. But what did he say? I want you to remember my death. Why? Because in that moment, he was doing what seemed impossible. He was doing, he was giving it all. And he simply was saying, I want you to remember that I gave everything for you. As a parent, I look at my children and I say, I'd give anything for them. Jesus gave more than just what a parent would give for their child or a grandparent would give for their grandchild. He literally gave absolutely everything to the world, to you and I, to every person that would ever come and that had ever been. So here's what I want you to do. Can you just take 60 seconds? And I need you to talk to Jesus. I, can't, I don't want to give you the words. I need you to talk to Jesus. And I need you to tell him exactly where you're at. Father, Lord, Jesus, Heavenly Father, however you communicate with the Lord. God, I need you to wash me clean. Lord, I've done some things that are displeasing. I've said some things. I've thought some things, Lord. But before I partake, Lord, of, of the supper, uh, of the elements, where you said, remember me, you also said, get right with me. Don't take this just because. Don't just go through the moment, but get right with me. I want you to take 60 seconds. If you're watching with us online, if you got some juice in the house, some bread in the house, whatever you can find, some crackers, go grab them. I want you to partake with us as well. Take 60 seconds, would you? Talk to the Lord. It's important. Don't take this moment lightly. You may say, Pastor, I've done this many. Don't take this time lightly. Take 60 seconds, would you? Amen. Jesus is sitting with his disciples. And he's having a meal with them. He's fellowshipping with them. He's talking to them. And he says to them some powerful things that maybe we overlook. If you've got that element with you, the cup, the bread, turn it over, open the side that has the bread, if you will. We read in 1 Corinthians. It says, For I have received of the Lord that which I also deliver unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night which he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given things, he broke it. And he said, take, eat this. This is my body which was broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You know, I know this is just a little piece of uh, unleavened bread. But if you could, without making, you know, too much of a mess, just, just break it if you will. Let's just break it apart. Jesus has got a loaf of bread. He's got unleavened bread, and he tears it apart, and he says, just as this is being torn apart, my body's going to be torn apart for you. And I want you to remember this. I want you to do this. I want you to take the elements, take the bread, and remember what I'm doing for you. You know, if you or I did anything like this, did something to such a degree we would our families would say we're never going to forget this moment that that grandpa or dad or someone gave it all for us laid down his life stood in front of something for us and jesus said i want you to remember what i did for you don't take it lightly because i'm giving it all for you today on this easter 
Sunday, on this Resurrection Sunday, would you, would you take the bread with me? And would you partake? Thank you, Father. Father, we remember, Lord, Lord, what you gave for us. And Lord, we were never worthy of it. But Father, you came and you gave it all for us. Your body was broken for us. And in this very moment, God, you, you came back for us after you gave it all. Father, we don't only just want to remember you, but Lord, we want to be the carriers of you. We want to be the carriers of the light that, that, that shines through us because you're inside of us. Lord, we want to rely on your spirit, Father. But Lord, in this moment, as we remember, Lord, what you gave for us, Father, may it be ever so real to us. What you gave, you gave the body for us. If you would also take the cup. After the same manner, also he took the cup, and when he had, he had supped, saying, this is the cup in the New Testament. In my blood, this do you as often as you drink in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat the bread and you drink the cup, you do show the Lord's death, right, till he comes. You know, sometimes when I, when I think and I envision the body, it's easy for me to understand the, the body was broken and beaten. But when I see the, the grape juice, I envision the blood. His life source was poured out for us, as well as his body being broken. But I love what the Bible says. He says, not only is there all power and authority in the name of Jesus, and every knee will bow, but there's power and authority in, in my blood. Now this today isn't blood that we're drinking. It's just symbolizing that. But there's something amazing that we can take hold of. There's authority that we can take hold of. And we say, Lord, Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over my mind. That every thought would be taken captive. That you would wash me. Father, Lord, I ask that you would forgive me. Wash me clean. Make me new, Father. The blood of Jesus has the power to do that. And you say, well, I don't quite understand that. There's much we don't understand. But he said, look, I gave it all, and it has the authority to do that. Healing comes through the blood of Jesus. Deliverance comes through the blood of Jesus. There's so much accessible to us through this. Now, would you take the cup right now? And Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this very symbol, Lord. You gave it all for us. It was poured out for you, from you, Father, for us today. Lord, as we partake of the cup, Lord, would you wash us clean? Father, I just pray, Lord, that, that healing would occur even in this moment. Those that are in need of healing in their body. Lord, those that are just needing you, Father, to restore and strengthen. Father, in this moment, would you do just that? Let's partake of the cup. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you are good, and your mercies endure forever. Father, you are our strength and our light. Lord, your joy is overwhelming, Father. Lord, we just surrender to you today again, afresh and anew. Lord, we trust in you today. Thank you, Jesus.